We need to create a sensitivity to the voice of God inside of us. Well, what does that look like? What does that sound like? Well, to each one of us, we have to learn what that looks like. Sometimes it's just a little nudge. You're getting ready to turn. It's like, check. Mm, something's not right there. I, when in doubt, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to back. I'm going to take a step back. Okay, hey, uh, let's get in a relationship. Like, little check. Oh, wait. Okay, I'm just going to pause right here for a minute. I'm going to go back to the map, make sure this is what it's supposed to look like, right? It's the leading of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was telling his disciples, look, there are things that I know. There are things that you're going to need to know. And when I leave you, I won't be here to tell you everything. But the good news is the Holy Spirit is going to come live inside of you and that's what's going to lead you to the truth in your life. If you would like weekly content that builds your faith and helps you walk out all that God has for your life, subscribe and be a part of Life Family. Today we're going to continue the series talking about um, God's direction in our life. Having, we're all going somewhere. We're all trying to get from here to there, whatever that looks like for you. And at, from time to time, we need a little help. We need a little assistance um, on our way, on our journey. I remember those days where you just had to pull over and ask for directions. Come on, them old school days. Like, where do you look for the, turn at the gas station, go down your second left. You know, like, what are you, you mean? Listen, I had this job when I first started ministry. I was a student pastor and I had to work a full-time job to be a full-time student pastor. Think about that later, but it's true. I had to work a full-time job. And uh, I remember one of, the, one of the jobs I had was I had to call and set up directions for these installers to go to homes and people's houses. And this is real life. I would call them and I'd say, okay, tell me how to get to your house. This was before everybody had their GPS on their phone. A little dated, I know. And literally this happened to me one time. I said, okay, we'll be coming from this intersection. Okay, no problem. Go, go about a mile. Turn left where the barn used to be. Okay, well, I don't know where I used to be. Oh, it's very easy. It's just nothing there. <laughs> True story. Well, what if, I, what if we can't, what if we pass it? Well, well what, is there any other landmarks? Yeah, yeah, there's an old man that sits on his front porch, two houses before. The, look for the old man, then turn left right after. Well, what if he's not there? He's always there, baby. Just turn left after the old man. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. But thank the Lord. Thank the Lord we had this right here. Come on. How many remember that old school paper atlas right there? Oh, there you are. There's my world travelers. Oh, yeah. You had to pull over. You had to look for that gas station, pull over on the side of the road, and just like you had to dig it out. Okay, where's the crossroads? You're looking around. Okay, where, what am I looking for? That old school had to dig out that. I just, this makes me just feel so warm and fuzzy. Save my life right here. I love you. I love you. The atlas. But then I'll, for, I'll never forget how technology moved forward and we moved, we moved on up. MapQuest. Oh, if you, that nephew know, you really know. That turn by turn, like tell you how, how far to go. I literally would have those on my console and it says, okay, 0.4 miles. I look down and I'm Okay, 0.4. I get to 0.3, start looking. Okay, got to turn right. 0.3, okay. That turn by turn, MapQuest. But... We all know life is better with a, with a GPS, that navigation system. In point one mile, stay right. In 500 feet, stay right. Oh, life is good. Just go stay in right. I'm going on the right path. Just recently, I was on a trip uh, with a friend who's a pilot, and uh, we were in this little small plane. He come pick me up. We've gone several places that I love. I'm a good co-pilot, by the way. I'm good. Hey, this is flashing over here. You might want to check this, man. But actually, this is our friend, my friend, Pastor George. He actually pastors in Dallas, came pick me up, and we got a little headset. I feel all official when I'm in there. I just feel like we're doing something, you know? But we were going, and uh, he's got all the instruments, and he's doing uh, na the navigation stuff, and the people in the, and are talking to us in our, our headsets. And all of a sudden, we, as we're talking just in between official business, we're just talking life and ministry, and there's a moment where it kind of got quiet. And I was looking out, I, we're just in the sky, and this was my view, just out the front windshield. Come on, look at that. Oh, that's so beautiful, God's creation. Just this wide open scene. And it just dawned on me, where are we? There's no road signs, y'all. There were no lanes, <laughs> there were no landmarks I could look for. I literally thought to myself, how well do I know this guy? <laughs> my whole life is, is, in, is in his hands. <laughs> And then as, as us pastors often do, we think, God, this is just like life, isn't it? 
this wide open, vast view I have and so many choices could be made, so many places I could go. In fact, we even had that conversation. Man, we're up here. He, he, he said, I mean, wonder where we should go. Could we just, what if we deviated now and went here and went there? I'm like, God, it's just amazing how we had all of these choices. And I want to tell you, life is the same. We're faced with so many choices. Our lives have so many opportunities to go different directions and, and be with different people and do different things. And I want to sow a seed into your heart today that, that helps me regularly and allows us to stay calibrated when we're, in, when we're doing life, when the journey called life. And this, this thought right here that God is the ultimate guide. God is the ultimate guy. He is the ultimate person to help you navigate your decisions, your relationships, your thoughts, your attitude. Oh, come on, that attitude. I miss a good amen moment right there. Come on. Good amen. Help you navigate how to be the right person, to be in the right place. And as we do that, we learn to trust him and follow after him. I love this verse. Psalms 32 says this. It says, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best path for your life, the best pathway. I will advise you and watch over you. Not just any path, but God's gonna guide you down the best path for your life. Look, he already knows who you are. He knows where you've been. The desires in your heart, he put them there. He's got the plan mapped out. In fact, he says in his word that I know the plans I have for you, they're good plans. He's, he's a good God. He wants to take you down the path for the good things he has planned for you. Not only does, well, he, does he have plans for you, but it, I love it. it says that he will advise you. He will give you advice along the way. He doesn't just say, here's the plan, good luck. He walks in step with you. He stays in stride with your life, and he says, oh, wait, nope, almost there. Another 300, okay, stay right, right? He will advise you. And then not only that, but he takes it to the next level and says, I've got your back. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to rebuke the devourer. I'm going to cover you when you need covering. I'm going to make sure I'm here to fight for you. Come on, we just sang a song. This is how I fight. Come on. He's going to fight for you. He's going to fight for you. He's looking out for you. He wants you to get where you're going. But the trick is, is we have to learn to trust him. So many times in our life, he's not the first choice. He's the last resort. Oh, it's like we get going. We get, we get um, short-sighted. We get narrow-focused, and, and all of a sudden, we see right here, and we get caught up in a moment of excitement or passion, and we start making decisions when we know God has given us direction for the long term, and we, we get fired up, and we make a turn, and we, we, take a, we, we take this turn, and next thing you know, we're like, where in the world are we? Oh, man. We get self-sufficient. Are you tracking with me, family? We start making our own decisions. We've got to learn to trust God's direction for our life. Listen, we can't forget that we've got God guiding us. If you had the ultimate guide, if you have the ultimate guide with you, why wouldn't we access him? Sometimes we forget how good he is for us and how good he is to us. Job said it like this, Job 8. He says, those who forget God have no hope. Oh, you ever just felt like, where am I? Just, man, there's no feeling like feeling hopeless. Like, I don't know what to do. That hands up moment. Oh, man, where am I? Don't forget to ask God for directions. Here's the gift you got to give to yourself on your journey. Ask God for direction. Don't get too self-assured. Don't get too prideful and arrogant. You know, we, <laughs> oh, man, now I'm preaching to the choir here. We make a few good decisions. God gives us peace, and we, we get a couple steps down the road, and we think, man, wow, this is, this is going pretty good. It's like, let me just take a little detour here. Let me just take this little side street, little shortcut, if you will. And it's like all of a sudden we circumvent God's direction and his plans for our life, and we find ourselves in a place that we've gotten ourselves, and we need him more than we've ever needed him. We need the hope and the help that God provides has anybody, and I, I don't want this to turn into a relationship message because it might after this question, but uh, has anybody ever been driving with someone that was too prideful to ask for directions? Oh, I don't want to look. I don't want to preach to anybody. I've been that person. It's like, no, 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 I got this. Oh, 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 I recognize that. I recognize that sign. Let me turn right there. And it's two or three turns later. It's like, where are we? I told you you should ask for directions, says my co-pilot to me. 
It's so true. But if we will be honest with ourselves, we've got to keep our hearts humbled and know that we can't figure it all out on our own. We can't, whether you're a first time traveler or you're the most experienced traveler, there are times where you need help along the way. And you've got to be able to humble yourself and say, I need help right here in this season, in this moment. I have good news for you, James 4, 6. The Lord says this, Lord, he gives grace generously. Man, I love that. In other words, you're saying I don't have to figure it all, I don't have to have all the answers. No, 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 there's grace for that. You mean I don't have to be perfect? No, 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 there's generous grace for that. As the scripture says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Man, what a wonderful place to be. To know that, that even when we do get a little off track, we can come back and say, okay, God, you know what? I strayed a little bit. I took a couple wrong turns. I need some help. I need hope right here where I am. And God says, oh, thought you'd never ask. I'm ready. I got this. I got you. Now let's get back on course. And God graciously does that. You know, when, I'm, when my, my GPS, my navigation, when I miss a turn, it doesn't say, are you dumb? You're the worst person I've ever tried to navigate. <laughs> Thank the Lord that that hasn't happened. If that's an option on my navigation, keep it off. I don't want to hear that, right? But instead, that sweet little voice says, make a U-turn at the next light. <laughs> Find the first place to turn around. Calm and sweet. Listen, God's the same way. You've got to know when you, when you take a wrong turn, he's not looking to beat you over the head with correction. He's saying to you, okay, all right, well, I got this. I'm still, I, we can still get there. Just going to have to take a little deviation. Let me here, look for this turnaround, right? He will get there. And that's why you have to trust him because in our own rationale, we try to, we try to figure things out. It's like, well, this just doesn't feel right. And my feelers in the house. This just doesn't feel right. I don't, this doesn't make sense to me. When God's saying, I know, well, now we're going to have to go this way to get you over here, where, right? That's a one-way street. That's not a safe place. But, oh, it's so much quicker, God, right? We have to trust him with all of our heart and know that he, his voice, his plans are good for us. One of my life verses, I love this translation of it, for, for, for me has been a life verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. says, trust God from the bottom of your heart, with all of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice. Listen for God's voice. In everything you do, everywhere you go. Okay, wait. Some things, some places? No, no, no. Everything I do, everywhere I go, he's the one who will keep you on track. That's why, we, that's why he's the ultimate guy. He knows the plans. He's going to give us the plans. All we have to do is trust him for the plans. We have to get past ourselves. We have to get past our own understanding, our own striving, our own rationale. Yes, our own feelings. And we have to say, God, I trust you. I don't know how you're going to get me out of here. I don't know how you're going to get me there. But I can tell you, he's the way into his best. He's the way out of your mess. He's the way, bottom line. And if we can look to him, he's going to guide us there. The sooner we do that, the more often we do that, the better our lives are going to be. God will guide you. We must trust God for his guidance, not just ask him for it, because there's times he gives it to us and we try to figure it all out again. And it doesn't make sense to us. His ways are not our ways. Come on, family. He wants to guide us. We've got to trust him. So let's just talk about this next couple minutes. Let me just give you a couple things, to, that, some practicals on how he guides us, what it looks like. God guides us in his word. God guides us through his spirit, the Holy Spirit in us, the leading of the spirit of God. God guides us through his people. Christian, faith-filled, God-honoring, Jesus-loving people can speak words into our hearts, can speak inspiration and encouragement, can affirm what the Lord is doing in our life. Come on, let's just start with his word for a minute. That, his word is that rope. It's that atlas. It's where you have to stop and you have to intentionally open it up. You have to get into it. You have to dig it out. Where am I in this right now? Where am I in my attitude, in my relationships, in my actions? Where am I in my words? And his word will guide us. Okay, you're not where you're supposed to be, but here's how you get there, right? It will show us the 
first steps to start taking. It'll show us the way to begin to move in our life to a place of health. Now listen, we're talking about God's best for our life. You can ask other people for their word, their advice, but we're talking about God's best for your life, his word, amen? Psalms 119 says this, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. It's enough to take a next step. I wish he would, I wish it said, I'll give you the brightest beam you've ever seen and it'll show you the next 10 years, just follow that path. That wouldn't be faith, family. It takes trust to just go with the next step. Okay, God, I took that one, now what? Take the next step, here's the next step. And the next thing you know, we look back and we, he's guided us step after step and we look back and say, man, I'm so glad I trusted him in that season and didn't deviate from his direction, amen? He, he guides us with his word. He also guides us with the Holy Spirit in our life. Yes. He guides us. The greatest gift that God gives us is the Holy Spirit to lead us, to convict us, to speak to us, his voice inside of us. And if we're not careful, we'll grow. If we don't honor the leading of the Lord in our life, the Holy Spirit nudges, we'll become cold and, and callous, and we, we'll, we won't even realize when he's speaking. We need to create a sensitivity to the voice of God inside of us. Well, what does that look like? What does that sound like? Well, to each one of us, we have to learn what that looks like. Sometimes it's just a little nudge. You're getting ready to turn. It's like, check. Mm, something's not right there. I, when in doubt, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to back. I'm going to take a step back. Okay, hey, uh, let's get in a relationship, like, a little check. Oh, wait. Okay, I'm just going to pause right here for a minute. I'm going to go back to the map, make sure this is what it's supposed to look like. Right? It's the leading of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was telling his disciples, look, there are things that I know. There are things that you're going to need to know. And when I leave you, I won't be here to tell you everything. But the good news is the Holy Spirit is going to come live inside of you and that's what's going to lead you to the truth in your life. Here's what, it, here's what it says in John 16. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. He will lead you, escort you. It's your turn-by-turn -turn navigation. It's that leading of God that's, that quickens us, that makes us aware of God's presence, God's direction, his leading each and every day. It's the spirit of truth. There are things that there are some things that we just don't know and we're not gonna know until God prompts us, until God leads us into it, amen? That's a faith step. This is, we're talking about trusting God with all of our heart, from the bottom of my heart, trusting in everything I do, everything, everywhere I go, amen? He guides us with his word. He guides us with his spirit. And you know what, believe it or not, God will actually use his people to speak truth into our hearts, instruction. Maybe it's a coach, maybe it's a mentor, a pastor, a church leader, a, a small group leader in your life, someone who God's surrounded you with, that there are times when you need people to have information that you don't have, that have been through experiences you haven't experienced, that have knowledge that you do not possess. You're gonna need, you're gonna need them to speak that into you. I, I joked earlier about the, the being in the airplane and not knowing where I'm going. I'm so thankful with this, this, this headset on. You can hear as we were crossing America, you can hear they'll switch us from tower to tower. God, they'll call the tail number and they'll say, uh, connect to uh, Houston Tower and we'll go to the Houston Tower. And, and it's like, all right, we're checking in. They'll say, here's where to set your barometer. Here's, here's the altitude you should be. Sometimes they're looking at the, the big picture. They can see all the planes. They can see our trajectory, they can see their trajectory, and their responsibility is to keep us safe. And they're looking out for our life, and they'll tell us, they'll tell you sometimes, hey, we need you to go down to, to 12,000 feet, or we need you to go up to 15,000 feet, and they're watching. They're helping guide us. They've got information that we don't have. They can see things that we can't see. And there are times in our life where God will bring people along the way and we're asking him to guide us and we'll say, 
he'll say, hey, speak this. And you, maybe you've heard the old joke, the guy in the flood, the flood started flooding his house. He went up to his roof and as the water began to rise, you know, a, a person in a, a boat came by and said, hey, can, can I help you? No, 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 uh, God's going to help me. Oh, okay. And the boat got in the, in the canoe, you know, he's paddling. No, no, no. A little guy comes by in a speedboat. He, stop, he stops, he says, hey, jump on, we'll get you. No, 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 I'm asking God to help me. And, and a helicopter comes and it's like, no, 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 I'm asking God, I'm trusting God. It's like, Okay, that water is coming up. And, and the guy, he obviously drowns. He goes to heaven because he didn't take any help. And he's asking the Lord, "What? I trusted you. What happened? He said, well, I sent you a, a, a canoe. I sent a speedboat. I sent a helicopter. What else did you want from me? I don't know. What, like, I, I'm trying to help you. I sent you help. And if we're not careful, we'll let all the help go on by. We've got to learn to recognize that sometimes God uses people in our life. Yes. He sends people along to speak instruction to us, to help rescue us, to be a blessing to us. We gotta be willing to receive that help. There's a story of, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter three, Samuel who would go on, who would eventually be a prophet to the nations and one who would hear from God and speak with such great authority was once a boy. And this is where the story is in 1 Samuel chapter three and where he was living in the church studying under the man of God, Eli, learn, trying to learn the things of God, the voice of God for himself. And Eli was instructing him, and he would work around the church. And there was a morning, early in the morning one day, Samuel's lying in the bed, and he, he hears his name, Samuel, Samuel. And he jumps to his feet, and it says that he ran to Eli's room, opened the door, and he said, you called me, here I am. What can I do for you? And Eli's trying to get his bearings, like, wait a minute, I've been asleep. I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So he goes back to his bed and he's laying there and he hears his name again, Samuel, Samuel, for the second time. And he jumps up. Oh, I know that voice. And he runs to Eli's room and he opens the door and he says, okay, I heard you. Now, what can I do for you? I'm here for you. I didn't call you, Samuel. Go back to bed. Okay, so Samuel goes back to bed and he's there again. For the third time, he hears his name, Samuel, Samuel. And he jumps to attention and he, he runs down to Eli's room and he comes in the door. And again, he says, okay, now I know I've heard you. And this is three times in a row. I'm not crazy. What do you need? And all of a sudden, Eli, the more experienced, the coach, the mentor, the, the man of God in his life, all of a sudden realizes this is an instruction moment for him. This is an opportunity for Samuel to learn the voice of God. And he said, I tell you what, Samuel, you need to go lay it back down in your bed one more time. But when you hear the voice, now say, here I am, Lord. I'm listening. Speak to me. It was an opportunity for now Samuel's walk with God to move forward. It was an opportunity for him to begin to understand the voice of God. And it, without Eli in his life, he may not have understood that. He could have been running the hall all day, coming back and forth to Eli. But another really cool thing is that I love that when he did hear God's voice, it sounded like the pastor in his life. It sounded like someone that God had put in his world to instruct him and to guide him and to lead him. And if we're not careful, the people that God has put in our world to speak into our world, if we get too proud and we're not open to the people of God speaking in our life, we could miss an opportunity to move forward in the things of God. I'm so thankful that Eli cared enough to even want to help Samuel. It moved his life forward. It kept his trajectory on path. It kept him on track. Oh man, his word, his spirit, his people, God is always looking for ways to move us forward, to guide us, to look after us, to watch over us. We just have to be willing to ask, listen, and trust him. We've got to ask him. We've got to listen. And then we've got to trust him to walk it out even when it doesn't make sense. And I know with all the help that God provides and all the, the, the resource we have available through him that there's still times where we, even when we're watching the navigation, we, we just kind of get off track a little bit. We realize we're like, okay, in the next 500 feet, 300 feet, 200 feet, oh my gosh, there it went. It's just one, it just happened. Life happens, family. Your, your intentions can be right or they can be wrong. We still end up off track from time to time. But let me say this to you. Let me encourage your heart. It's never too late to reroute your life. 
It's never too late to recalculate where you are and where to get where God wants you to be. You've got to be willing to ask him for that help. You've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to have that sober moment where you realize, I need God right now to do this. And look to him for that help. A young man went to his father and said, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait for you to pass away to get my inheritance. I want it now. I want to enjoy it right now. The father said, okay, if that's what you want, he gathers up all his wealth, divides it between his sons, says, here's yours. And the, the boy goes on and he begins to, the young man spends his inheritance. He blows it on a wild lifestyle and, and selfish things and, and pleasing, pleasing things that are pleasing in the moment and he just blows it all. And then he finds himself one day, he wakes up broke, empty, nothing. He's hungry, starving. And he goes to someone and says, look, can you help me? I'm hungry. He says, yeah, I'll give you a job. Go feed my pigs. Here's, here's, here's a slop. And, and the story says that he, this is Luke chapter 15, by the way, it says that he's beginning to feed these hogs. And he looks at this. He says, I'm so hungry. I want to, I'm thinking about eating this slop. And he had this sobering moment I'm telling you about right now. He realized his decisions, his choices, his direction had not gone the way he thought it was going to go. And he realizes he realized he needed to get back. He needed to get back on the right track. And this is where this is what happens in Luke 15, 17. It says that he finally came to his senses and said, How many of my father's hired servants have plenty of food? But here I am starving to death. He just came to his senses and realized there's so much I have access to. There's so much more to my life that could be had if I would get back on track, if I hadn't selfishly, arrogantly tried to do my own thing, if I would have followed the plans, man, this could have been so different. Let me tell you, fam, it's never too late to reroute. It's never too late to get back on the road. It's never too late to repent. It's never too late to get right with God and say, Lord, I need your help. I need your hope. I'm listening. And let me tell you, as someone who cares for you, if you find yourself in that place, you need to go find your quiet place. You lay back in the bed, Samuel, and you say, God, here I am. I'm listening. And you need to allow God to begin to speak to your heart, begin to give you direction. You need to get out the road map and you need to ask God to guide me in your word. Lord, help me get a hold of something that's going to anchor my heart in this season. You need to ask the Holy Spirit to begin to lead you, convict you. God, what, what are the decisions I'm making that aren't right for my life, that aren't your best? You need to be praying for godly people in my life. Lord, if they're not in my life now, bring them. I'm open. Let people who care about me, that have the things of God in their heart, that can, they can share them with me. I need to connect with people who are going in the right direction. That's God's best for your life. And then I want to tell you, just like the young man who came back to his father's house, the father wasn't sitting up on the porch. Come on. I knew it. You blew it. I could have seen it coming from a thousand miles away. No, no, no. Instead, the father said, that's my boy coming. That's my girl. That's my child. And the scripture says that he ran to meet him. Ran. I love the visual image of him just running. Cloud of dust. You know, people wonder what's gotten into him. It's his massive, passionate, overwhelming, extravagant love for his child. Finally, I get to embrace you again. He throws a party to celebrate him coming home. I want to tell you, don't let the fear of coming back to God or the fear of, of asking for help paralyze you. You need to know that God is standing with arms open wide and he's saying, come on, I've been waiting for you. I've been ready to help. I'm here. My grace is more than enough. I can give you every word you need. I can provide everything you need. I, I, I'm here. Give me the chance. I'm ready to help you right where you are. Amen. Come on, he's a good God. He wants to meet you right there. Come on, family. Hey, thank you for being a part of service today. 
We hope that God's word met you right where you are. We hope you took something that's gonna help you move forward in God's best for your life. We wanna hear from you. There's a link right below this video you can click on. Send us a note, let us know what's going on in your world, where you're watching from, maybe even how we can be praying for you. We love believing God with you for God's best in your life. You can do that by clicking that link, sending us a short note. Hey, maybe also you've made a decision to follow Jesus recently. That excites us, we celebrate with you. We wanna hear from you. We wanna know what God is doing in your life. You can text the word follow to 22999. We'll respond back with a link that you can click on. Go to our website. We have some great next steps for you, how to move forward in that decision that you're, you've made to follow Jesus. Whether it's water baptism, whether it's getting in a life group, or maybe even planning in God's house right here with us in Life Track. We know whatever that next step is, God has great plans for your life, and we want to be a part of seeing all of God's best fulfilled in your heart and in your life. We hope you're doing awesome. We can't wait to see you next time. If you don't have a home church, we want to invite you to be part of Life Family. Remember, you belong here. We're so excited that you've joined us today. Join us again next Sunday or anytime throughout the week. You can subscribe to our channel and hit that bell for notifications so you never miss a service. We're so excited you joined us today.